Hey, up next on the Mar Army Rock Show, we are glad to have no stranger to the Mar Army Rock Show, Jenny Mann back. She is the vocalist of Blame Shift out of New York. They are on tour right now. Jenny, welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back. Yeah, it's been a little bit since we had you on. So, um, hey, I wanted to catch up with you. You are out on the Wake the Dead tour. So uh, why don't you tell everybody about the tour? Yeah, we actually, this is day five. Um, we are in South Bend, Indiana right now with a band called the Nearly Dead. So we're out on the road for another about three weeks. So how'd you hook up with the Nearly Dead? Let's talk about that relationship and how that tour came together. Well, you know, we've known them for a while, just being both being female front of bands, kind of in the same scene. Um, and we've just been talking in the past about, you know, kind of hooking up and doing a doing a run together. And finally, we were just like pulled the trigger on it, you know, now or never. And, uh, it's it's been really a great matchup. We have very similar fan bases, and uh, we're having a good time so far. So out available in this tour right now, you have what you call trick or treat VIP packages, and I think it's for both bands. Is that correct? Yeah, it's fun because you know we've never actually done a joint VIP before, but it's 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 awesome because you know it's it's a crossover. First of all, you know we um, get to meet their fans and they get to meet ours, which is awesome. Um, kind of you know get to know each other a little bit better before you know the show starts and everything. And I just think it's a really good cross promoting a, a great way to just kind of like meet everybody. And we've been having a really good time doing some fun Halloween themed um, things, and yeah, it's been fun. So, like, what kind of things can people expect to do if they get get the VIP treatment? Do they uh, get to meet you backstage, get photos? What all do they get for that? Yeah, so uh, they meet us before the show. We spend about a half hour together. We take pictures. We sign a um, poster for them that's just for this tour. They get admission to the show, get a little trick-or-treat bag, and, um, we, you know, we have, like, little costumes. And it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a real laid-back kind of vibe, but um, it's definitely worth checking out. Now, it's been just a heartbeat since uh, Heart of Stone came out, but I was going back today re-watching the monster video, and for folks that have you know maybe not heard the story behind it, you see this dollar bill going through some rather seedy hands. Is the, is the video more about money or the circumstances involving the girl in the video? Give us the theme. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We, we kind of had this idea for, for a long time to do a video about, like, tr- you know, kind of tracing the, the – the, how dirty a dollar can be just money not a dollar but money in general how how dirty money can be and kind of seeing a, a dollar as it makes its way through all these scenes you know you think about the money that you have in your wallet where did it come from where has it been what was it used for and like we kind of had this like idea for a while now and when we wrote monster we're like this will kind of be a perfect song to match up this idea with but then still we were like it's going to be a hard kind of concept to pull off without a huge budget um but then we met eric schneider and he's just really he's kind of like very very much a visionary and he um he was like no i think it's a great idea and let's and this is how we're gonna do it it's how we're gonna show the story and and yeah we pulled it off and i think it's i really i'm proud of that one Video came out great, and it's a great tune as well off of that. Once again, I mentioned that's the Heart of Stone EP for folks to go pick that up. Um, hey, I, so I was looking back. It's hard to believe that uh, the Blame Shift EP came out in 2010. It's been that long. And uh, here yeah. you are, you know, and while the original EP was good, there's no denying the band's really grown in your craft. So what was the biggest thing that, that uh, helped you grow? Was it touring? Was it producers? Was it playing um, well, yeah, you just hit on pretty much everything. I mean, uh, number one off the bat, I would have to say producer. Um, our producer, Eric Ron, he, he didn't do that self-titled EP, but he um, went on and did the Black Rose, which really was like our debut, I would say, like real time work, you know, first time working with a real producer who really actually wanted to help our sound and hone our sound rather than just record what we had written. You know, that's what makes a producer special is when they can take their talent and actually make your songs better, you know, because they have that expertise. So um, I think meeting Eric Ron was definitely a pinnacle um, turning point in our career, for sure. Um, He's gone on to do like some huge things. He's actually doing the new Godsmack album now. So we kind of started working with him right from the beginning when he was just doing baby, you know, baby steps. And now he's doing like crazy big albums. But, um, and then, yeah, the road, you know, 
the road obviously kind of just seasons you and and um and the road has been like so inspiring to us and i don't we would never be where we are as a band if we hadn't done the amount of touring that we've done so so um on this this particular tour you put out a post a while ago um before the tour started asking fans about like what cover tune they wanted to hear you guys play during this tour so did, mm-hmm. did the fans actually vote or did you guys pick a one and did you did you come up with a finalist yeah well they did vote and um you know people came up with you know you know how people come up with the most obscure random things <laughs> but <laughs> it was more just like an open conversation to see what people had in mind and um, we did pick a cover and it's been a lot of fun but you have to come down to see one of our shows in order to see what it is i'm not giving it away i've done a couple interviews already and i have not said it before so i'm making people come to the show to check it out (laughs) (laughs) that's fine with us i love to get people out to your shows and and, uh, check out the the unique cover i'm gonna say it's why i don't actually know if it's unique but unique a uh, hidden cover, I guess we'll call it a hidden cover tune there you that, go. that only folks that see the live show know about. Now, um, this there one you probably go. can tell me about, though. Uh, you also had folks, you put out a post similar asking uh, people, you know, what song do they want in the set list? And I'm just kind of curious what your fan base did it, what did they come up with and did it surprise you at all? <laughs> yeah, you know, our fan base is like, they're old school, which we love, but um, they always come up with like the most the oldest songs that we haven't played in years that we probably never will play again. But although on, when we did ask on this time around, there was a song that um, was kind of a, like a unanimous amongst like the old, like old school Blimsha fans. And we really wanted to do it for this tour. But um, we like, you know, our, our, our members live all over the country. So when we come together for a tour, it's like we get ready for tour and leave like two days later. So we just didn't have the time to do it. But, sometime in the near future we're going to do a real old school song that the fans have been asking for um and yeah it's going to be awesome but this time around we did mostly uh you know stuff from secrets and stuff from um heart of stone so and you were alluding to this just then i I, you know you're so often especially like the smaller club shows somebody will yell out a tune that they want you to you know request they want you to play and i don't think people understand you guys can't just pull everything from your catalog out of a hat can you no absolutely not and it's funny that you say that because yeah, I think fans think that, you know, it, 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 the funniest thing is that fans know our songs, some of them better than we do, because they're listening on a constant basis, and there's, you know, there's songs of mine that I haven't heard in all years, you know, that, because I'm not listening to my own music every day, so it's, um, it's yeah, it's one of those it's funny things that, um, yeah, it's not so easy to just whip out a song, for sure, you have to rehearse it, obviously, make sure you Everybody knows their parts, and um, <laughs> I wish it was that easy, but it's not, unfortunately. So, um, you know, with you guys being out on the road now, have you had any time to do any writing? Are you writing and working on some new music? Um, yeah, we definitely are going to be uh, working on some new some new stuff. We we want to go out in January to LA and record a single. Um, so yeah, so we definitely are going to start working on some stuff. We haven't yet. I mean, it's just the beginning of this tour, so we're just kind of getting, um, you know, used to the road, used to our tour mates and all that stuff. And then, you know, we'll definitely start getting creative and, and writing some stuff. So, so what does writing a song look like for Blame Shift? Is it, is it Tim on an acoustic guitar? Do you play on a guitar or a keyboard? Or how, how does the writing look like for Blame Shift? Yeah, um, well, Tim usually uh, starts with an idea whether it's a guitar riff, usually on an acoustic guitar. Um, and um, once he kind of gets that going a little bit, he'll bring it to me and um, I will, I don't I don't actually play guitar, but I do write the melodies and the lyrics um, for the song. So once he comes to me with an idea, we'll kind of jam a little bit. And, um, you know, he, he actually will, will pass ideas around to the band, the rest of the guys, like send, you know, stuff through the, you know, email, like tracks over and, and then like Mike and, and Jeff can lay down their parts, you know, kind of just building it. And then I'll come in and, and do the vocals and put some melodies and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it's definitely a, a, a long process, but it's, it's a fun one. So uh, I can't let you go without talking about the jewelry line, man. I know uh, my partner in crime, Ms. Mar, bought one right when you were first getting started, bought a bracelet. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Strong and how Strong's doing. Yeah. I mean, it's just been a, a, such a blessing for us. We, um, 
you know, we, we started it really organically, as you know, and a lot of our fans know, you know, we were just on the road. I remember exactly where we were when I decided that I wanted to start doing it. And I said to Tim, pull over, let's go to Michael's, let me buy some charms, let me, let me, you know, and, and we were stopping at Michael's every week. I was, you know, making them by hand at the merch booth after the show every night, um, with my little, you know, tackle box that had all my supplies in it and all that stuff. And, and then we realized like, this is like real, besides just like our fans, obviously buying it because it's us, um, people were connecting to it and we felt like there was a, an open place in the market for like, you know, jewelry that had this sort of meaning and gave back to music education and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, so we just went full force. We took about a year off. It's been doing really great. We're in a little over 125 stores now all over the world. We're in Japan, Puerto Rico, Canada, um, music stores, boutiques. Uh, yeah, so we're, you know, we're international all over the place. Um, Japan, Canada, Puerto Rico. It's just, it's taken off um, further and look more crazy than we could have ever imagined. And we're really thankful. And it's a good deal um, thanks to our fans and our, our you know, support system. So, you know, we're really excited. So I'm going to give you a chance to uh, let folks know where to go to find it, where you want people to go to find Strong Jewelry. Yeah, you can go to our website. It's getstrung.com. Uh, you can find all of our bracelets. We have a men's beaded line that uses the ball ends of a bass guitar string. We have necklaces. And we have a new men's line that's going to be incorporating a bass um, guitar string that's coming in um, a few months. So stay tuned for that. Hey, Jenny Mann from Blame Shift out there right now on tour with the Wake the Dead tour. Uh, go see them in a town near you, especially out in the Midwest right now. They're touring heavy right out in that area. So, um, Jenny, always a good time having you on the show. I appreciate you doing this. Thank you for having me. Talk to you soon.